From the beginning of the war, I made it clear that Israel will act against all those who attack. This is why earlier today, I asked the Israeli cabinet to back my decision to strike against the Houthi targets in Yemen. The port that was targeted... <laughs> You're so cooked! ...used as the entry point for weapons that are supplied by Iran to its Houthi terrorist proxy. That's right. Remember that the Houthis are Iran proxies. Iranian backed. The Houthis have used those weapons to attack Israel, to attack Arab states in the region, to attack many others. This strike comes in direct response to the killer drone attack yesterday that killed one killer. He was proud. He's like, you gotta emphasize killer person and injured several others a hundred yards from the U.S. consulate in Tel Aviv. Every time he gets in front of this, the cameras, he's gotta. And remember, he's speaking English. This is for the American audience. This is for us, right? This is for the Western world. And it's to let you know that look how close they were to attacking the United States. Just a mere 100 yards. So America, you're under attack just by proxy here. They struck a building in Tel Aviv that was 100 yards from a McDonald's, okay? Just kidding. But those are the vibes. He always positions whatever he's trying to sell the American people. He's always, always trying to conflate the United States with Israel and Israel with the United States. So try to put those things in your mind. Remember, FDR did a similar thing about Pearl Harbor. When Pearl Harbor was attacked, he wanted to use it for justification for war. You know what's fascinating is that we all remember Pearl Harbor, the day that will live in infamy, December 7th, 1941, when Japan made a surprise attack on the military base Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Well, you, what you don't know is that the Philippines were also attacked and conquered by Japan that same day. And I want to say some other places, uh, Guam maybe was one of them. It was an attack upon U.S. territories in Southeast Asia, in other words. And Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii was one of them. FDR's, you know, remember that FDR's words there... He called it the American island of Oahu, or so, what did he say? What was his direct quote? Yesterday. Here we go. December 7th. Yeah, what is it? 1941. Uh-huh. A date which will live in infamy. We knew that. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. So the United States itself was attacked. Well, wait, what state? The United States of America was attacked. What state was it? But you have to understand, Hawaii in 1941 was not a state. Hawaii became a state in the United States of America in 1959. And remember that the United States held Hawaii as a territory. Well, there were other territories within the U.S. Empire, the Philippines, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think Guam was also attacked on on that fateful day that FDR says will live in infamy. But what did he focus on? The attack on the Philippines by Japan against American forces in the Philippines was far graver, and actually they won. They conquered the Philippines, and they installed their own military occupation um, for the duration of the war until they lost, obviously, and it fell back to the United States. But why did he not mention the Philippines? Why did he not mention Guam? Why did he not mention these other territories? And why was it just Hawaii that was singled out. Well, he's trying to sell the American people that the United States was attacked. And in order to do that, it's hard for Americans to believe you if it's some territory that they couldn't find on a map. They don't even know where the who, where are the Philippines. The Philippines were attacked? That's in Southeast Asia. What does that have to do with the United States of America? Prize, he actually says the United States of America was attacked outright. So it's sort of, it's it, it, it's a philosophical thing. And the book How to Hide an Empire by Daniel Emerwall goes through this extensively if you want to learn more but you know it just calls into question what does it mean when we say the united states of america well the united states of america has always been the states plus territories it's always been a collection of territories but it's been very ambiguous what does it mean to be a territory within the united states well as it turns out the united states is all too keen to bear none of the responsibilities to the territories but all of the rights it's entitled to the rights to those lands but it's not entitled to any responsibilities for the people on that land Land. And it's an interesting concept that he goes through about how, you know, you think of anti-imperialists being egalitarian and morally commendable, but at the turn of the 20th century, the United States had uh, anti-imperialists within, you know, Congress, but they were rabidly racist.
racist, and the reason that they didn't want to imperialize or colonize these territories and bring them into the United States, uh, you know, political system was because they didn't want to give brown people their rights. And it's the same thinking that goes to the Native Americans. Why do we just kill them off? Why do we institute an apartheid? Well, because we know that if we give them full citizenship, they're going to have rights. They're going to have political status. They're going to have a voice. And if they're going to have a voice, then they're going to be able to take the white man's land away from him which he stole. So it's the same thinking. We want the territories, we want the land, we want to be able to have access to the resources, land, and labor of these territories, but we don't want to give these people, the indigenous people, their rights. But there was a lot of litigation, if you will, about what does it mean to be a territory. I should reread that book, it's fascinating. But the aggression of the Houthis goes well beyond that single attack. Because for the past eight months, the Houthis have launched hundreds of ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and drones against Israel. Wait, why would that be, Satan? Why do you think that people are attacking you? Why do you think that every, seemingly every country that is surrounding you is attacking you? What are you doing? Why do, what are you not factoring into this equation that you don't want us to know about, obviously? Well, you're committing a genocide against 2.3 million people, and you've killed hundreds of thousands of them in the past eight months. He's going back to November, because I think that's when the Houthis started striking, but... The only reason those attacks have not caused a greater loss of life has been the defensive measures taken by Israel and its allies, which together have intercepted hundreds of projectiles. He's just, he's got his, like, his go-to, you know? I would like to thank the United States, Britain, France, and other members of the International Maritime Wow, he's Coalition actually thanking the United States? That was formed to repel Houthi attacks. But the drone attack Houthi. that struck Israel in the early morning hours yesterday shows that more than defensive action is needed to curtail the Houthis. Offensive action is also needed. It's needed to ensure that Iran's... You just got caught with your pants down, bucko. Now you've been humiliated once again on the international stage. Iran's terror proxies pay a price. Well, it's called the deterrence strategy. He's just outlining more deterrence strategy. We gotta do some crazy shit, because just to tell people not to with Israel. Remember that this happened in 2006 as well, okay? Remember that Gaza is Israel's punching bag. In 2006, they lost a war with Lebanon with Hezbollah. They were humiliated, and that's when Gaddy Eisenkot, who just recently lost a son who was fighting with the diaper forces in Gaza, and we're supposed to feel bad for Gaddy Eisenkot, who's the literally, like, the articulator of the Dahaya Doctrine, which is that we're gonna wreak disproportionate violence against civilians and critical civilian infrastructure in order to break the spirit, humiliate, punish, and terrorize civilians is going to be our official strategic policy when it comes to our neighbors in the region. Because we want to show that we are bad insane and do not with us because we will your whole family. We are like the mafia. We don't give a f that's what we do. That's our deterrence strategy is literally just acts of aggression and an endless barrage of war crimes. Rise for their brazen aggression. For over half Once again, look, it's terror proxies. It's the terror proxies, you guys. Their brazen aggression. For over half a year, the Houthis have not only attacked Israel, they've also targeted the ships of dozens of countries traversing the Bab el-Mandu Straits. The Bab el-Mandu? Where's that at? Can't you just say Red Sea and Suez Canal? What's the Bab el-Mandu Straits? Anybody know? This is a maritime corridor through which some 30% of the world's maritime commerce flows. Yeah, oh my God, you know what? We're talking about the 30% of the world's maritime commerce flows. We're not talking about the 80% of Gazan inhabitants that were living on foreign handouts before October 7th. We're not talking about the 200,000 civilians that you've murdered, women and children, mostly just children. Most, the, the biggest demographic of the people that you have slaughtered by the hundreds of thousands in the past nine months has been children. You psychopath. The international community must redouble its efforts to protect this vital waterway. Redouble your efforts. We haven't killed enough. We've got to do more Anyone that's protesting the actual savage murder that we are committing against the Gazans, we're coming after you. You're going to disrupt our, our commercial ships. You're going to disrupt our supply chain. You're going to disrupt our ability to accumulate capital and make profits. We're going to entire family. And that's how the world works. 
and to hold both the Houthis and their Iranian sponsors accountable for their aggression. Today, Israel is being attacked by Iran and its proxies on seven fronts. Seven fronts. Remember, I said it was like, Israel, you've gone to war with five other countries. You're, you're at war with five countries right now. And then somebody's like, well, maybe I think Iraq has also been attacked by Israel. So, okay, maybe it's six. No, he's saying there's seven fronts. The Houthis in Yemen. Let's, let's go through the list. I mean, you're just telling on yourself, big boy. Baby Netanyahu. Cry baby Netanyahu. What are we going to call him? This f***ing cry baby. You're just self-reporting. Yeah, you're being attacked on seven fronts, mother. What does that tell you? It couldn't be me. Couldn't be Israel. Are they right? No, I'm right. Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Shiite militias in Iraq and in Syria. Okay, so Iran backed terror attacks in Judea and Samaria. And of course, attacks directly <laughs> conducted by Iran itself, as the world saw on April 14th. <laughs> we got to run that back. Thank you, Netanyahu, for letting us know how unliked you are, how you are so much of a terrorist, like Pakistan has called you, that literally the entire world is trying to get rid of you because you are a cancer upon the international stage. Let's run this back. This is too good. The Houthis in Yemen, Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Shiite militias in Iraq and in Syria, Iran-backed terror attacks in Judea and Samaria, and of course, attacks directly conducted by Iran itself. Okay, still kind of a reach. I'd still say it's six, not seven, but he's really, he's like, no, that was seventh. We directly was attacked. If your son is constantly fighting at school, it's a high chance he's the bully. In defending ourselves against this Iranian terror act, Israel stands on the front lines against a regime that threatens the entire Middle East, threatens the entire world. This is- Dude, yes, of course. Let's go back, let's run that back. We have to know that Iran threatens the entire world. Against this Iranian terror axis. The this Iranian, the Iranian terror axis. <laughs> the Iranian terror axis is a threat to the entire world. Um, entire world, what do you think is the greatest threat to international peace? The United States of America. No, I thought it was the Iranian axis of terror. No, that would be the United States. Yeah. Oh, so wait, the United States and its proxy Israel are just projecting their own crimes onto their victims. That would be correct, yes. ...hands on the front lines against a regime that threatens the entire Middle East, threatens the entire world. This is why all... Oh, look, there was a, there was a jump cut. He couldn't, he must have known he was, he couldn't even get that one out without revealing that he was lying, that they had to like edit because they couldn't get smoothly from after that lie to the next lie. So they had to do a jump cut. Let's watch that again. ...hands on the front lines against a regime that threatens the entire Middle East, threatens the entire world. This is why ah. all those who seek a more secure and stable Middle East should fully support Israel's action against this terror axis in Yemen, in Gaza, in Lebanon, and elsewhere. And elsewhere. Could be anywhere. We, you know, I'm not even going to say. It could happen, you know, else, just elsewhere. You must support all of our terror that we're doing. Everywhere. Not only in these places, but also elsewhere. Uh, where else? Uh, well, I don't, I'm not going to, I can't disclose that information quite yet. <laughs> okay. Iranian-backed terror proxies. I swear to God. If I find another Iranian-backed terror proxy, I'm going to sh** myself. And to Israel's enemies, I have a simple message. Do not doubt Israel's determination to defend itself on every front. All those who seek to harm us will pay a very heavy price. Don't f*** with us! We're crazy! Look what we did to Gaza! Our punching bag! Israel cannot fight a war against Lebanon, but they have to show that they're fucking crazy. They have, it's, what does a bully do? They pick on people that they know that they can dominate unilaterally. They don't look for a fair fight. That's why they gotta blow up they can't, act, they can't actually go, you know, and stage a war against Hamas. They know they'll lose. It's a conscripted army. It's just a bunch of kids on TikTok dancing. They don't know what the f*** they're doing. They're terrible. They're conscripted. Do you know what that means? It's obligatory. You don't have people that know how to fight. Insane. Yeah, and who's footing the bill? That's what we want to know. To defend itself on every... Let's listen to this last. And to Israel's enemies, I have a simple message. Do not doubt Israel's determination to defend itself on every front. All those who seek... All seven fronts. Don't you ever doubt our ability to defend ourselves. Don't you dare doubt our ability to defend ourselves. We are the Israel diaper forces, goddammit. We shit fard our pants. You know what I mean, though? What? Determination to defend itself on every front. That's right, we're f***ing crazy. The harmless will pay a very heavy price for their aggression. Okay, cool. So just another threat of more supreme international crimes of injustice against humanity. Awesome. Thank you, Satan. Perfect. Nixon ordered Cambodian genocide. Clinton sent cruise missiles to Sudan. People died. Obama gave the orders to